you have to hold it. I mean, it's it's a lot of work. But if somebody doesn't if somebody doesn't join a game, have them do a certain. Why? You know, if you lose 50 members, uh, send out. You know, you can do them online now. Those surveys. Why did you leave? Maybe they. You know, I I, I address it through uh, on the next slide. Um, why people leave? There you go. Uh, people move away. They get injured. They lose interest and try something else. Finances change in economy. Become too old. I need another O on that too. Um, at the end of the day, which one of those can you guys control? There's one of them. Which one? Right. The rest you can't. If somebody moves away, they move away. Um, to answer your question, it there is no norm. For instance, even in, I'm just talk generally about tennis clubs. Okay. For instance, uh, the membership at the Toronto Cricket Club for a single member is how much? Do you know? I'm looking at you. <laughs> Two. Her, either one. It's probably, I know what it is at the lawn, it's $16,000. So the chances of you leaving are not high. If you're going to spend that money, you're going to hang around. At a community club, the cost to join is a lot less. Um, and that's, that's one way people stay. You know what I mean? But, but, but at the end of the day, if you're not providing the right programs that they need, they'll leave. They'll go to another club or they'll try another sport. And you just need to be aware of what those, you know, what those programs are. I can't answer that, but you can if you survey, you know, if you just take the time one year to survey 20 people. Yes? Say something else about the last one. Yep. Um, I don't know if you know, but we have a really successful um, coffee clap. We call it coffee clap program. <laughs> we have 50 60 uh, older people come out twice a week in the summer. 50 60 people uh, Tuesday and Friday morning. Wow. Really there you go. And, we're getting, and that's uh, been running kind for. Of new members. That how old are how old are they? We have uh, we have Helen Trainer who's eighty eight at cool. our club. And uh, we um, we have a very successful program and we're getting more people. There you go. It's not just retired people, it's people who are off in the summers. Right. They come, they come, and it's only gonna grow because people are retiring. And people are telling me, oh, Debbie, I can't help you this year on the executive, but maybe and when I retire in two years, I want to get involved. Well, this is, this is why older people... Yeah. Well, I, I was... Also adaptability of program, because uh, yeah. I had a lady who was the same age as Helen at um, Wendland Park Tennis Club during a clinic, and she said, I'm done with tennis. I said, no, you're not. So I grabbed a couple of foam balls, and I got she and the three other ladies, and we played nice. mini tennis. The next thing I noticed, she's raiding my uh, basket, stuffing all her pockets with foam balls, ready to go. And Alex Cooper started that program 35 or 40 years ago at Don Mills. Oh, okay. He well, had the, he had the coffee we have, program. We have the champions of the 75 plus. Wow. And we have a lot of these ski, and the, they're very active, and right. I wanted to actually promote those people and they do it do it so I stand corrected there are two that you can control how I mean I don't know I mean I I started playing at 10 and I passed six zero so and I play every day did you I can get into movies on a seniors uh, ticket but uh, there's, a, there's a quick little one I'm teaching at Don Mill this lady uh, Reverend Fromm comes to me hands me a note, her doctor's note. If she dies on court, she was 91. If she dies on court, that's great. She's the Hungarian junior champ. The ball had to go back to her. The first lesson was free. Because if I didn't put the ball back to her, and she just stood there and hit the ball like this, she wasn't going to take the lesson. I got to quit at 11.20. Why? I'm taking Russian lessons at U of T. Yeah, that's what we have. When I was talking about too old, I was basically talking about the boomers. Because, you know, there's a lot of my friends that they're not playing much tennis anymore. 
So you can't address, I, I think you can almost address anything with the right program. If you have that program, then people in this room can share from, from that knowledge. This page is from the survey that we did last year. Uh, Scott um, sent me it over and you'll see it, it just gives you what other clubs do. Websites, 80%, uh, park and rec guides, 42 60% 60, 60 have partnerships with local schools to promote tennis. Open houses, barbecue, free lessons. By the way, I did this presentation and then he gave me this stuff. So the, the things that I, I believe that work from our survey seem to agree with what we got. Hold special events, social night. Uh, uh, first visit free or half price membership for newcomers, try events, free clinics, socials, other, Facebook, newsletters, school flyers, email blasts, mobile signs, billboards, local TV, uh, word of mouth. 30 to 40 percent offer some sort of outreach programming in the community uh, via schools, fairs, hospitals, little aces. 28 percent hold fundraising initiatives benefiting hospitals, Philpot, cancer, uh, heart and stroke or their own club. Uh, these things tend to, to get people to bond together and to work together and to stay together. And then I have what I call the Rayonich factor. Believe me, it's for real. Um, you're not going to feel it right away, but if you watch TV, uh, anybody here noticed how much more coverage we get of tournaments on TV? Why? Why are we getting all the ATPs? We never got the ATPs. It's all Milos. So right now we have a bona fide superstar who, by the way, sp speaks relatively well, although that interview he did at Davis Cup was a little strange. I think he was still on the court playing. He gets massive media attention. He's well-spoken. He's an Ontario kid. He's product of us, a buzz around tennis. And I can tell you, Sweden, before Borg, um, who ever heard of tennis in Sweden? And since, since him, they've had two world championships, champions, and their clubs became full. And I'm not here to promote high-performance tennis to club executives, but I can tell you, in the scheme of things, high-performance eventually gets benefits for clubs because tennis is hot, Everybody's talking about it. The Davis Cup, uh, as I told Michael Downey, he asked me when he took on the chop like eight years ago, what could Tennis Canada do? And because I've been involved in Davis Cup for so many years, I said, win the Davis Cup. Because when you play Davis Cup, you're not playing for the individual, you're playing for the country. And the country will rally around you, the flags go up, and people take notice. That's what's happening with Milos. And if he does well this summer, um, we are going to benefit from it. Kids are going to start showing up and they're going to be saying, I want to be like Milos. And they're going to show up at your club. And this is one of the reasons, because of Borg in Sweden and, you know, right now with uh, Djokovic in Serbia, kids are picking up tennis rackets. They want to be like him. And by the way, there's a, there's a junket going to Serbia for the Davis Cup in September. Anybody that's interested, give us a call. Um, everybody's going. Um, so, uh, go ahead. One quick thing that uh, Jim mentioned earlier that I, I think is a major uh, point is to get on the Tennis Ontario website, take a look at the club list, take a look at the clubs that are similar to yours, okay? Take a look at what they do, look at their website, uh, check out. Um, one of the best junior teaching pros is on, in Ontario was sitting at the back. This lady here is the goddess of junior teaching within a, a very, very interesting upscale, high-end and small-scale market. Uh, Bob has done an amazing job in Stratford uh, putting together a schools program. This gentleman sitting at the end of the table here, okay, a little smile on, the, on his face because I know, okay, he is the guru of websites and how to get membership on websites and off websites and different components because he spoke at the uh, Toronto Tennis Meeting he's from Wallace Park. Uh, the Fergus contingent over here has one of the best little 10 or 12 person after school programs, engagement programs that I think I've seen. 
10 or 12. That's all you need to get to get going on this. So you have a tremendous resource in this room. It's interesting that all the successful people seem to be here to learn more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I uh, say something? Yes, Mrs. Magnus. And, um, having grown up in Germany, and I grew up with the Boris Becker, the Boris Becker factor. So we've never had, in all my childhood, anybody who would win on the international scene. And all of a sudden, there's Boris and there's Steffi. I can tell you, in September, when these guys are playing Serbia, all our kids, if we want to get our kids off the couches and off the TV, away from the TVs, have a fundraiser or a little get-together with pizza and Coke at your club. Diet Coke. Uh, and have a poster or a picture like this and rule. I mean, how better does it get than have Roman play Djokovic and so on? This is world class and I think every challenge, every OTA club, in September 7 or something like that is the date 9 to have, which is still the season. Like they're not playing in the winter time when we're all wearing skis. So we're still all playing tennis. It's just after the long weekend. And every kid, every club should have wear red jackets and be out there and cheer on our team. I think it will be phenomenal. So I've, I've been to one Davis Cup. It is unbelievable to, to do this with the kids themselves. So, sorry to say this, but uh, I think uh, uh, Jim is uh, doing a great job trying to get that enthusiasm. But without saying, you don't have to be top players, but we can buy into sport and tennis. It's our sport. Sorry. That's all right. No, you don't have to be sorry. Reinvent the wheel. What you need to do is go into some. I've been in markets, I've been in the market for the last 10 years where I'm watching is Tim Horton and everything in that community is about hockey. It's the Northern Ontario community. It's North Bay. They have one of the best tier two junior program, tennis programs in the province because there is a group of five or six individuals, all business people, the YMCA, the guy who governs the local mall, they've all got together and decided that there would be a secondary thing. In fact, it's the only teaching program in Ontario, physical education teaching program that has a dedicated tennis component at Nipissing University. So you can crack tough markets. You can crack tough neighborhoods. In conclusion, attracting and retaining members requires a plan of continuous action and discipline. As I've said, you can't do it one year and think you've solved it. It has to be ongoing. Results do not come right away, but they do come over time. Additional information can be found on the OTA club manual. This was given to me by Scott 2.07, marketing and attracting new members. And I think that's it for us. Please ask some questions. Yes. Um, our club doesn't have an inter-county, and uh, I was told by our club uh, pro, our tennis pro, we need four courts for inter-county. And I don't know where we got that because every when I talk to the people, they're a little surprised. But we only have three courts. And that was that's like one big complaint of some of our more competitive. We yeah. get the competitive people because we don't offer your county. Yeah, I think I. Th yeah. I, I, so I don't know where they get the idea. Well, things you, you got to go to the source. You should call the inner county and find out. But I will tell you this. I get a lot of questions, I get a lot of calls from developers and park and rec people when they build a community and they, and they call and they say, well, Jim, how many courts should we have? How many should we put in? I said, at least four. You need at least four courts, preferably eight. If you have eight, you get a critical mass of people that can form a community club and then build a clubhouse and you're on your way. But if you have clusters of three and two courts, it's just a lot harder because you can't do programming. Well, our problem is we, we tried to, we got our courts um, resurfaced, we got funds, but we tried to ask for four courts and they wouldn't do it for years. And so when we reduced it for the existing three, they allowed it. So that was the thing. So where? we had tried for four courts. And where, where, where are you from? We're called Climber. 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 Yeah. Binder Twine Park down there. It's, uh, yeah. And there was a t tree toad yeah, I know. that they wanted to protect. I know. Uh, I bring. Uh, it would give us that I'll mention this to the to the group because I've been uh, 
harping at Tennis Canada probably for the last five years. I've, I've begged them to think about forming a PAC, a political action committee for the country, not just for Ontario. Because it's expensive. You, you, you enlist people that have influence in the communities to exert their influence. I used to work for one when I was a real estate agent at TREB, Toronto Real Estate Board. We had a political action committee. And in your case, for instance, the hypothetical, you would call us and we would sick a whole bunch of people on whoever it was. They'd be starting to write emails, letters, talking to the mayor. We'd be all over them and you'd have your four courts. That's how this thing works. And what happens in Canada, like about six years ago, Tennis Canada freaked out because in Saskatoon, they took out four courts and they put in a basketball situation. And everybody's all upset about it. I said, well, had you planned for this? Well, what do you mean? You have to be, it's like, it's like membership recruitment. You can't sit down one day and decide you're going to do it. You have to do it every day. It's like fitness. You have to do it every day. Political action committees, we need to get active to protect our sport and to grow it. This city is, in Toronto, we're growing like crazy. We got subdivisions going right, left, and center. I get calls and I have the data in my office, but I need a, I need a survey that probably would cost maybe a hundred grand to back up why tennis is important, why you want to put in four courts. I know why. If somebody calls me, put in four courts because it forms a tennis club. And the guy says, well, why? Because when you form a tennis club, you're going to have a group of tennis enthusiasts taking care of that property for the city. They're going to do outreach programs. They may even want to bubble it one day. Well, we don't want to bubble. Well, you want to bubble in the winter. It's lit. It protects the houses around it because it's not dark. You know, you can argue any argument, but unless we get active, we can't help. Like if I'd known that, I would have tried to help you. So anybody that has these issues, let us know. Uh, you know, we're at the ground floor on this, but my belief is in the next few years, we really need to form an, a political action committee for tennis across the country and particularly in Ontario to protect our courts. Because if they're not gonna be used, the municipalities are going to convert them into parking lots or whatever they think because they don't have any money. The cities are a little broke right now. And one of the things that the OTA can offer is we can offer superior programming at a lower price for any of these facilities who join us. Low cost, well you guys know, low cost insurance, junior programs, we get funding to come in. It doesn't get better. So the park and rec people say, yeah, that makes sense. You'll do our job for us. Of course we will. But the club has to invest in being a member. Did I help you? But you know what? I can't answer the inner county because I'm not in, you know, there to arm lanes. Yes? I was involved in running the junior at the end of level. Yep. I, I did a program and I did a program for... We can hear you. For uh, the inter-county juniors. Yes. And yes, you can use three courts. Uh, there are six teams going on, singles and doubles, and uh, I suggested to the fact that only have three courts, use your two singles and one double, yes. and that eliminates the other two. Thanks. And you can do it. And we will be I don't know who's running it now, but when I was running it, that was suggested to the platform that's already yep. And yes, you can have an interface to do Yep. Team. So you got your, you got your answer. Any other questions? Yes? Um, just how do you get the new junior club run? Is it just promote um, progressive tennis and we don't have any equipment at the club. Could you explain about Tennis Canada? How, what can we do to... Where are you? In Fergus. Dave? Is Dave still there? What can we do for Fergus? Or We've just got a new club. For they need some progressive equipment. And he wants to live he wants to teach progressive tennis and we've got nothing in the club and he's asking for well we've got a couple of mini nets today yeah, who is your uh, who's your regional chair okay fine we'll find out who your regional Re chair Fergus. is uh, send me an email uh, with what you need yeah. okay and we'll work on it for you yeah, the, the new tennis pro we've got he's, uh, he's kind of just certified and spoke the last year right GTA. yeah and i looked at it today and he wants to kind of grow progressive tennis at the club, right? Yep. So 
Yeah, no, Dave can, that. yeah, I can follow up with Dave. The, oh, sorry, I have to go do the uh, tennis. Program, tennis program in the bubble, so uh, you know where to find me. Okay, I'm on the website. Yeah. Okay, don't need to worry about a uh, card or anything else. Okay, just look what, Eli what, or I up. What uh, time do they start, Dave? Give us a call. What time do they start? I, I don't know. I've got to go get the racks and the balls and everything else. Yeah, we're running out of time. For, Call Dave. Call Dave. We'll take care of you. Okay, Any other questions? Yes? Okay. So if I want to put a case for uh, our counselor in the uh, city where I'm here in Rexpo, uh, here, right. uh, Toronto, here, um, to explain the very issue that you just uh, right. uh, presented, that at least four courts would be uh, would basically create a community or a tennis. Yeah. Uh, we have three. We don't have a clubhouse. Uh, we don't even have a bathroom. So, um, and yet, uh, you know, because of the limited membership of all the uh, delegation, then we can scratch what it We don't have enough members to grow. Yep. Then we don't have enough members to uh, come up with the club. And if we want to grow, uh, if we want to expand, we want to show us where is your membership. If you have a member, then we can probably think about giving you more. So that's uh, a situation perhaps that I don't know if we can take an approach later. Uh, yep. Uh, yes. Guide me through a process like that with, uh, some call me. Okay. Give me a call. Yeah. We can work. We can work with any club. I can't guarantee that we can get more courts built for you, but uh, I, I have a lot of sympathy for clubs that only have three courts. By and large, we weren't. Tennis wasn't there when the courts were built, or we uh, obviously the community built them when they built the subdivision or the division. We just need to know that the message is minimum four, perfect eight and don't let them get away with it because to build four courts is almost the same price as building three. Come on, it's one extra court. Building eight versus four, well that's a lot more money. But if you get the four, it's just easier, it, the math is easier. Like at Q where I am, I'm from, we have 10. And we've always had 10 since, I can even remember, since the, it was the first tournament I played in 1962 and they have always had 10 courts. So at some point in time, somebody knew what they were doing and got a lot of courts built. Be adding another court is really difficult. But let's have the discussion. Any other questions? I want to thank everybody very much for coming and uh, have a great hit. And uh, thanks for being OTA members.